All right, hello there and welcome. My name is Santi and I am the creator of the Obsidian online course where I teach you how to become an advanced Obsidian user. Uh, so that goes from like being a complete beginner into really advanced use case. And right now I have a really cool example. One of my students from the course, his name is Ned. He's a university student of anthropology in China. He gave me a few of his example notes because he was wondering what is the best way to organize his notes. Uh, so I'm going to break things down for you. I'm going to actually, you're going to see me go through things and to see how I could improve this current system so that it's useful for both learning and in this case for producing creative work, which in the case of university, for instance, it is to produce papers and produce articles and homework that you're sent and how, what is the best way to organize those things, right? So as you can see, I created a start here file. These are the actual notes that Ned gave me. So from there, if we open one of these, we can see that there's quite a few links to other notes as well as tags and so on. So we're going to really break down what I would recommend in order to organize things in the best possible way. Now, you might have noticed already that I'm using crazy shortcuts to move quickly through things like that. And that is because I mapped some of the shortcuts. I want to break down every single one of them in my online course. So if you're looking forward to that, check it out. And I'm also using something called Vim mode, which is in editor and it's Vim key binding. So that's how I can use you can actually see the keys that I'm pressing in here. That's how I can use different keys to navigate through files really quickly. So if you want to learn that too, check out the online course. I plan to make a whole section on that because I couldn't live without that mode. I almost never touched the, the mouse, so I'm actually going to move it. <laughs> but yeah, so that is that is some of the things that I'm going to be using. So if you're, you feel quite lost at times when I'm pressing a lot of random keys, don't worry, this is something that I, it took me a while to learn, so, but I think you can learn it too. So if you're interested, you know, check out the link in the description. Now, with that said, we're going to go actually through some of the notes as examples and break things down. So, so if you take a look at things, like this is what the current network of, of notes look like. And that is because a lot of these notes, these are actually the notes that Ned sent me. So we're going to go through them a bit better. But... What's actually going on is that even though there's only quite a few nodes that he sent me, I created the links to all of these ones. So a lot of these will be empty, but I thought it would be useful to keep them just for the sake of explaining things better. So right now we go to the start file and we go to an example like this one. Now we can see how Ned actually is taking his notes, right? So this is class in China and we can see a few different tags. We can see some links. And we can see different sections, right? And what Ned said was that he really wasn't aware of how to really make use of headings in Markdown. So headings in Markdown are just, are just done by adding a hashtag like this. Sorry, not a three, a hashtag, uh, which in my case is shift three. And that way we can divide sections like so. Now, I'm going to do that through all these files just to give you, um, you know, just to give you a couple of ideas of how, what are the benefits of actually using headings? So I'm going to do that through all of them. So give me a second. I'm just going to push it. All right. So now what I've done is I've made headings and subheadings. Subheadings that are done by using, uh, you know, different numbers of hashtags. So three headings is a subheading three and so on. You get the point, right? So I did headings and subheadings like so. And that way I managed to make quite a few different divisions of a specific sections. Uh, particularly, I use years because he's taking notes about different events that happen across different years in China, as well as some subheadings of like relevant, very relevant things, that, more than bullet points that happen in that specific year. Now, what the reason why I made this is because we can now have an outline. I'm going to click here and this is actually going to be there we go, it just updated. So it says outline of class in China. And right now we can see that there is a really quick and convenient way to navigate through all of these sections. We can fold things by clicking on this little triangle. So like that, we can easily go through the different years and just click on them like so. So I think that's that's amazing. I mean, that already improves so much the navigation through a long file. And, you know, personally, I like to keep my files a bit shorter than this, uh, but that is because I have... You know, I have my own system of how, how I use tags and links, which we're going to cover in a part two of this video. Right now, we're, I'm just going to show you how to really make great use of headings and outline. Uh, so a long file like this is not a bad idea, especially if you're just taking quick notes and you're going and you don't really want to, 
you know, go, dig deep into like, oh, where should I put this? Should this be on a folder? Should this be tagged? Should this be linked to a specific like uh, index uh, node or so? So I don't think long nodes are a bad idea. As you can see, Net also uses some some um, screenshots in here from different nodes from classes and so on. So yeah, th that, that's a great thing about really having access to this outline that now you can actually fold things, you can quickly navigate through things and it's gonna be very efficient to navigate through this long file. So how do we turn this thing on? I'm just gonna get, you know, I'm gonna close it like that and I'm gonna go to settings and if we go to core plugins, we're gonna be able to go to outline and we're gonna turn this, it's by default gonna be off, so right now we're gonna turn it on and as you can see, it's not there yet um, because it actually opens here. So if we click on that note right here, there we go. That should make it be there. And I personally like having it on the left. You could even drag it and just have it there. And you could actually just resize and have that there. But if you go to another note, you know, it's gonna update with that. But personally, you know, I can't fold this. And if I want to go full view, I really can not just fold that quickly. So I'd rather have it in here by just dragging it and putting it there. There we go. Now it's there, right? So there we go. And again, you know, in I, I right now I don't want to really go through the very fundamentals of every single little thing because I also make use of uh, backlinks and graph view and so on, which I discuss in my online course. And right now, I just really want to make an emphasis on how to navigate through headings really quick, right? In the next video, we're going to cover when to use links, when to use tags, and maybe when to use even folders. I'm not a heavy uh, user of folders. Uh, but right now, what I want to show you is we're going to create a new note. I'm going to just split this in half. It's going to create a division like so. So yeah, again, like I'm not really going to go through every single step, but if we create a new note, uh, I just did Control N, and now we have, um, let's just title it, China relevant facts, right? And now we can make a link to class in China like so. And now here's, okay, I'm gonna just take this to this other side just because I find it more comfortable to work on the left and to visualize things on the on the right. And I'm gonna put this in preview mode right now. So it's gonna show me the headings like so. And these headings is part of like, um, it's part of, um, you know, you can fold them and unfold them. Right now, the little triangle that folds them and unfolds them is not visible. So all you need to do is click on these dots. This is something that I created, this bullet points visual visualization. I like how they have different symbols for different sections, different types of headings. Uh, so yeah, that is by default activated in this theme, which you can find in appearance. There we go. Community themes. And if you look for my name, oops, Santi, there we go. You can use it and that is actually the theme that I'm using. So if some things look slightly different, uh, check out the theme if you want to. So, okay, with that said, now we want to write something about, for instance, inequality. Inequality, like so, right? And we want to search what is being mentioned about inequality in this note. Inequality, there we go. And we can see that there's this section in issues in early 1990s where it mentions inequality and yes if we press enter we can see other mentions of inequality but right now we're going to use this one so i want to link to the, maybe i'm drafting like a homework in here and i want to see what are relevant facts about china and right now maybe i want to do a heading on inequality and I, I as a reference for me to be able to revisit this quickly because this might be closed by default and i i know i have something in in my class in China link that that talks about inequality, but I don't necessarily want to go here and then search for inequality. You know, that'd be quite cumbersome. So what we do is we actually create a class in China, we press tab, then we press heading, and now we have access to all the different headings that we have in there. So we know, for instance, that this was 1990s, early issues in early 1990s and now if we, if we click enter we can have access to that so now if we go into preview mode and we press Control click we can go to that specific section and it's going to highlight that whole heading because it goes from here sorry from issues in early, right here it goes all the way down until the next heading so it's really highlighting this whole section but we know that we want to be more specific, you know, thankfully, because inequality has been mentioned quite early on, uh, just here. I'm um, sorry, it's not there. Where is it? Uh, yeah, no, it's right there. Inequality. There we go. So what if we want to be more specific to that specific section? Okay, what we would do is we would 
create another one of these, we could go for the node that we want, we press tab, and then we use this carrot symbol, that's what it's called, and we are going to press that thing, and now we have access to different uh, sections of that node, not just headings, but anything. So if we just type Chinese people, Chinese people become increasingly angry at rising inequality, and we click on it, now that is going to create an ID number. So this ID number is right here, meaning that if we close this, and now if we open that, we're going to have direct access to that specific section, right? And the same could be done. Let me just open this in another in another pane. And, you know, the same could be done about any section. Say, for instance, okay, we are in the same one, right? Issues in early 1990s. And we have this specific quote uh, by Guo 2008, 2008. And we want to mention that. We can do the same. We go class in China. Now we do this symbol, which in my case is shift six, so the carrot symbol, and now we go class, relations, there we go, and we press enter. And as you can see, it created another ID number, and now we have access to that specific section. But of course, these ID numbers don't really mean much. So what are we going to do is, let me just open this on the side, oops, uh, click, there we go. And I'm going to go into edit mode in here, and if we use this limbo, and rise of inequality right and now we can see that so take a look at you know and these are nodes that you're making for yourself and you're directing yourself to specific sections and you can either hover over things and see a preview of them or you can press click a uh, control click and open that in a separate pane right but yeah, a lot of the times you can just simply quickly take a look at this. Be like Chinese people become, and you can even like, you know, just really quickly know exactly what you mean. So by the way, if you don't have this by default, this preview, you just activate it by going to core plugins in the settings and going for page preview. So turn this on and now you're going to be able to hover over things and see that a specific part. So that's really the benefit of using ID uh, to blocks to specific sections and a blog is anything that is really separated uh, from some other text or is even a bullet point or you know it has some space above and below and the same with headings anything that has a hashtag uh, to determine a heading can be can be used like so this is sorry this is another block what I mean is these headings right so this one is linking to a specific heading like so and that is just done again by detecting all the headings in a specific node. So there you have it. And once again, like, you know, you can split this into two sides. I'm going to drag this to here. And now we're going to open this section. And now we can quickly navigate through this big file and see exactly what we need. And as we start needing something such as this one, you just go here, you go class in China, and then you go 2013. There's two. So I'm going to choose uh, the roughly this one. And now I have a direct link to that section. And when, when, when I'm here, I simply go into preview mode and I can open that specific section. Or if I press control click, I can open it separately and I, I can take a further look at it. Or I can simply just hover over it and see what's up in there. Right now, there's nothing in there, but it's going to update automatically. Hopefully, let's take a look. There we go. And now we can actually see what's going on in there, right? So I'm going to delete that. Uh, so yeah, that's the idea. We can really take advantage of these links. And yeah, it's great. Something to keep in mind, especially when you do links to headings, is that if you change the heading name, this one, you know, at all, it's going to probably break things. So you have to make sure that if you're going to use links to headings, you keep the, the names of the headings the same. Or in that case, you can use this method to use a specific ID number for the specific block. Now, just keep in mind that this feature only works in Obsidian. If you're maybe using an app in your phone or you like to visualize your markdown files from another application, this is not going to be properly available. But of course, you can always search for that in your search bar in here. So A305. And we're going to see the two mentions. One is in China Relevant Facts, which is where we're in, and in there. So, you know, it's not the worst. I I think, you know, I think using this blog ID is very useful, so you might really benefit from it. And yeah, there's, you know, we can go anywhere we need to go by using those links. So yeah, that's about it. I know it went quite fast. So, um, you know, feel free to ask me any questions if you have any. 
And I'm going to do a part two, especially where we discuss the difference between using links uh, to create index nodes for where we can access different sections versus using tags to organize our different nodes that belong to different categories and so on, right? And maybe even when it's useful to use folders. So that kind of stuff. So if you're interested, let me know. If there's anything that you would like me to cover for the next video, let me know. And again, please check out the link in the description for my online course. If you want to really go through the fundamentals of Obsidian, if you feel this was a bit too fast paced for you, uh, check out the course. I break everything down for you in very simple terms, very concise, very short videos, digestible videos. So check it out. I would really appreciate it. And with that said, again, thank you to Ned for letting me showcase his notes and to use it as a really good example. It's, it's probably hopefully something that we all can learn from. Uh, so yeah, uh, with that said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna plan the next video and I hope to see you there. So yeah, subscribe to the channel and yeah, that's about it. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.